I'm Riley here with Rob, Tony, and Charlie, and we're from Gold Derby, and we're going to be talking about who's going to win Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited Series or Movie, and also Supporting Actor, and also none of these people uh, were in movies. So these are just uh, Limited Series awards <laughs> now. Uh, Rob, you are still on the Tony Collette train. Uh, do you feel like that is appropriate in September 2020, a year after the show aired? Yes, I'm, I'm like that snow piece of train that is just like pummeling through the earth. Um, Tony, if Tony Collette does not win this category, I'm going to fucking freak out, okay? I'm just putting it out there. She was <laughs> so good in that show. And I know, I know it's slightly underperformed. And I know we've got the Watchmen thing and Mrs. America, but... Um, did she not get a SAG nomination? Did she? She did. Yes, over the leads. Yeah, and she's Tony freaking Collette. She only has one Emmy. It's, so it's far. just freaking this time. It's only freaking this time. I can only give you one cuss word. Whatever you call it over there. Um, sorry, I'm I'm, I'm blabbering. Uh, maybe I'm slightly biased because you know she's an Aussie. But I mean, really, come on. We watch that and don't tell me that she is so deserving. But that being said as opposed to the men, which we'll talk about later, this category is killer. Like, honestly, they're all, I'm looking down the list, they're all so, so good in this, uh, in their shows. And Jane Smart, you know, she's got three Emmys already, and there's no one from her show that she's competing with, so it's a tough one. Same goes for Holland Taylor. I mean, she, I remember when she was getting nominated for the practice for like one episode in supporting, or three episodes, or whatever it was, like, they love her. And you've got Margot Martindale, she won for drinking a cup of coffee. Tracy Ullman, she wins for everything, or she gets nominated for everything. Who's ever do the man? Like, how many Emmys has she won for Orange is a New Black in both comedy and drama? What a category. This category is one of the best of the night. I think with Tony Collette is that Unbelievable really underperformed when it came to the Emmy nominations. It only has four nominations. Uh, it's missing from lead actress for both of its TCA nominated performances. I just feel like the show is running out of steam and I don't feel like it's suddenly going to get a second wind now. I feel like it's just hanging on and the nomination is its reward across the board at this point. Yeah, but here's where I think you're wrong is that um, I don't know that it matters. I think you're focusing on the show and not the actor. And this is Toni Collette. Uh, Toni Collette it's particularly, she was such a standout on this show. And we've seen that it doesn't matter how old a show is or how long ago it aired. If there's a performance that stands out, um, and she, I think she definitely has the standout performance in that show, I would say maybe only second to, or right on the same level as maybe Caitlin Deaver. Um, but I, I definitely think that Colette really kind of runs away with the whole show. Every time, every moment she's on screen in that series is electrifying. Yeah. Um, and the fact that, um, you know, I think her, her biggest competition is Jean Smart, um, simply because she's Jean Smart. And um, the fact that I think this is one area where vote splitting actually does hurt the fact that there are three Mrs. America people nominated and the way that that show was structured, you know, people had their showcase episodes, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, find one that stands out when they all have their fan bases. They all are, you know, I mean, literally the most honored people on in that cast, Uzo Aduba and Margot Martindale and Tracy Ullman who, you know, between them could probably fill a zip code with their Emmy trophies. Um, so I just think that, you know, Tony Collette, it's kind of, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, you know, Ben Wishaw winning last year. You know, it was just the performance that stood out so much. And, you know, I think Tony Collette is an even like more respected, beloved name. And I think, I, I just think that she has this one. Probably you disagree. Um, kind of. I, I really don't know what to make of this category because I think um, almost there. I think you know everyone 
really does have such a strong chance of winning. And then there's Holland Taylor. But um, <laughs> I, I, oh, I, really? I, 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 no, I, I, would, I wouldn't count. I honestly wouldn't count her out. I, I honestly wouldn't count her out. I do have her in sixth place. In my, I, I imagine we all have her in sixth. No, I don't. I have her in third. In third. Okay. Okay, well, I mean, I just, I, 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 I honestly, it just shows, I just don't know what to do with this category. So I think Gene Smart is uh, sort of, um, uh, is sort of like, it feels like a default front runner uh, because obviously, um, you know, we can say, you know, Mrs. America underperformed the nominations. We can say that Unbelievable underperformed the nominations. Watchmen exceeded all expectations. And, you know, the idea that uh, this, uh, I, I, I think it could be, just one that's just strong enough that the force of this show, because it's going to walk away with a ton of trophies uh, over the, uh, over the, uh, what is it? Uh, the uh, nine night extravaganza of the Emmys that we have this year. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Six ceremonies over seven nights. Yeah. Uh, the, nine, the, the, the uh, 12 night uh, a marathon telethon that it's going to be. It's, it's just, I, 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 I think that it just sort of narrowly, is in there, but I can't count out any of these uh, nominees because they're just all, they all have such, they bring such wonderful, you know, performances to the table. Uh, you know, and, and I just got to say, I just love that Tracy Ullman got in here. Uh, mm -hmm. I know there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, uh, focus on Margot Martindale and Uzo Duba. Uh, they were kind of expected, but I was really happy for Tracy Ullman because she is so, so good and doing something that I don't think we really have seen from her. Um, mm -hmm. it, uh, at least in several years, so I'm I'm really glad to see her in here. And but then again, as I said, I can't count anyone out, but I just kind of think that Jean Smart's ahead. Yeah, I don't have Jean Smart or Tony Collette predicted uh, because, like you said, she feels like a default front runner. And in general, I feel like you can't cruise to an Emmy these days. Although Tony does raise a very good point about Ben Wishaw, you know, beating a whole lineup of people in series nominees. Uh, I've got Uzo Aduba. Uh, first of all, the Emmys just have an irrational love of Uzo Aduba. We've seen her, you know, win awards. I wouldn't when... say it's irrational. I, like, uh, I, I would have loved to have seen Lorraine Toussaint win for the second season, but she wasn't even nominated for Orange is the New Black, whereas Uzo Aduba, you know, she gets nominated and she wins while the rest of her co-stars. And they were competing in different categories. Or were they? It, the second year, they're in the same one. Yeah. yeah, you're right. They really do love her. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you're right. That's a really good point. I have her in six. Maybe I should change that. And, and I feel like she, uh, like in this category where it's hard to pick a front runner, I, I feel like there will be external factors that come into play. Uh, she's playing Shirley Chisholm, who has you know, extra resonance now with... Uh, Kamala Harris getting the vice presidential nomination. Uh, yeah, so I, I feel like this is open out, open enough for something like that to happen. It's a great point. You know what's funny is that yeah. I usually, I usually hate the external factor argument. Like I usually really, really hate it. Um, but I feel like, because I like Rob, I have her in sixth. But God, that makes me want to move her up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not enough to and, put her and in the one, you, but and well, the thing uh, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna steal the uh, I talked to these people uh, from Rob because uh, I got to I got to speak to uh, Uzo, and what's what's interesting is um, I I don't know how much this is gonna play, uh, how much this is gonna be a factor this year, but um, when you see her talk about Shirley Chisholm and uh, uh, what she what how she got to appreciate what she meant in history. Uh, especially when she talks about her mother, who uh, who's Nigerian because she's the daughter of immigrants, very much like uh, Senator Harris. Uh, I think you know it's it's almost too good. It's it's almost too wonderful a parallel to it's 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 hard to just dismiss that. And I think and and that could be something that gives her just that slight edge. Perhaps yeah. I'm too perhaps I'm too cynical. Sometimes I wonder if Emmy voters even think about that si that kind of stuff. You sometimes cynical? I, no. I sometimes I think they do, but again, you have to remember these are Hollywood people. These are these are jaded Hollywood people, and not always the most emotional and or sentimental people in the world. 
Um, I'm not saying it is, it's the factor. I'm saying, I'm saying it, it could, could be. be. It could yeah. be. I'm just always hesitant to let, sometimes I, sometimes I worry that I let that get into my brain too much and I try to put it out. So. Oh, well, come on, live a little. There's also um, other, other external factors could be that, you know, Margot, Tracy and um, Tony are playing like strong women where it's about, for, for two of them, equal rights. And for one of them, it's about rape and hashtag me too. And that kind of narrative. Um, Holland Taylor is also playing someone from old Hollywood and a lot of voters will really respond to that. There's a lot of external factors. It's not just about um, Senator Harris, which I think is a really valid point. And then Gene Smart's in a show that has completely gone gangbusters and will probably win a lot of awards, as you guys said. And I was making that argument for succession, so why not make the same argument for Watchmen? So this category is a nightmare, and that's why I just go back to Tony Collette was so good, and if she doesn't win, I'm going to fucking freak out. Yeah, I've got Tony Collette in fifth. Uh, she could win, but the person I'm more concerned about is Tracy Allman. I've got her in third. Uh, I just feel like she gave such a surprising performance, uh, and she's got this narrative about how you know they didn't want to give her the part, and now she's you know, back on television and knocking it out of the park. Uh, I could see people rallying around her, but you know, the, people could rally around a lot of people in this category. I will say to the point about external factors, uh, yeah, there are external factors, but in summer of 2020, I think that some external factors are going to resonate more than others. Yeah. Well, let's just give it to the Aussies. They're almost yeah. every acting category in the limited categories are, have Aussies in them. Just give them to the Aussies. <laughs> All right, so we do have another category to discuss here, and that's supporting actor. We'll see if people are as fired up about this one. Uh, leading the odds is Jim Parsons for Hollywood. We also have Dylan McDermott nominated for Hollywood. We've got three guys from Watchmen. We've got Joe Van Adepo, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, Louis Fausto Jr. And then rounding up the category, we've got Titus Burgess for Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, so Tony, start us off here. I would love to be predicting Titus Burgess. It would make me so happy. Um, <laughs> so, but I'm not. Um, uh, I think Jim Parsons pretty much had this in the bag from the moment Hollywood aired. You know, uh, 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 regardless of whether it got a limited series nomination or not, we've seen that not matter in, in certain cases. He, there are certain performances that are just so big and people can say it a, that that's a positive or a negative some people find it a good thing some people not so much um to take that role uh it's a completely different side of what we've seen jim parsons do um to be such a venal toxic human being um and play it without a, a shred of you know, a wink or a coy smile and just play the absolute toxicity of this human being. I think it was just undeniable um, that he was probably going to win this. Um, and I'm biased because I definitely love that show. I was thrilled that Dylan McDermott got in. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just think in, in this kind of narrative, he is, he won't, there won't be a vote split simply because Jim Parsons' character was so Loom so large over the whole series. And, um, you know, I, I don't know how you choose between the Watchmen guys. Um, so I think that's an area where vote splitting could happen. And Rob? Um, I find this category really confounding. Um, no disrespect to the nominees, but I don't think it's as, as um, tight and strong as the female aside uh and we have vote splitting as an issue i think unbreakable kimmy schmidt is probably a, a non-event um in the limited series and movie categories even though titus burgess is phenomenal as usual um and then we have the two watchmen um sorry hollywood um nominees as well and jim parsons is larger than life and that's why i've had him obviously like most people um, out front from the beginning but I'm very, very tempted to change up my predictions and go for someone from Watchmen. And of all three of those, I mean, Lewis Gossett Jr. is a legend. Um, you know, he's won a lot of awards. 
Um, but I, I think the actual, the person who made the most impact for me was Yaya Abdul Mateen II um, as Dr. Manhattan. And I think, um, I, I have a feeling he could win this one. Uh, so I just have to got this gut feeling that, you know, he really does make quite an impact, particularly in the last two episodes. Um, so, you know, Jovan Odeko has one episode in particular, obviously is playing, you know, the, um, the earlier version of um, the Lewis Gossett Jr. character, and that is phenomenal as well. So really, the only ones that don't work for me necessarily here are probably Dylan McDermott and Jim Parsons. That's because I just did not really like Hollywood. That doesn't mean that it's not going to do well. So again, I'm very, very confused about what to do here. And I think when that happens, in my experience, following these award shows for a long time, I generally just go with the consensus, and that's why I'm just probably going to stick with Jim Parsons to be safe. What do you think, Charlie? Um, I, I concur. I think, you know, I think Jim Parsons is going to win his fifth Emmy. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, it's second place is, I don't even think there's a clear second place person. Uh, and I even think that it's probably between uh, Titus Burgess and Yaya Abdul-Mateen II. Um, but I just think, yeah, I just think that uh, Parsons uh, uh, dodged a big bullet uh, with um, no other, with, uh, other than Dylan McDermott, no other uh, Hollywood supporting players, particularly Joe Mantello, uh, not getting in because I think that would have complicated things a lot for him. Uh, with with the, the way this lineup turned out, I think it's smooth sailing for him. Yeah, I'll say about Titus Burgess, I feel like he's in kind of the same boat as Tony Collette. You know, he's somebody who's got a lot of passion for his performance, but he's just kind of barely hanging on here. Uh, not as much of a factor as fans of the show would like it to have been uh, in the Emmy nominations. And thank you for playing really bad analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I do love that. Um, you know, he's the only one in a movie as well, but... Um, you That's know, true, right? He is in a movie. We do have a movie nominee. We do have a movie nominee. Um, he that that show did quite well in the comedy series categories, like in terms of nominations, but it never really did a lot in terms of wins. And I just don't know if there's a lot of passion there. I'm surprised he was nominated, to be honest. Um, not because he's not great, but just because you know it's an interactive kind of movie on Netflix and about a show that used to be in the comedy categories. It doesn't seem likely, but he did well. And in fact. Geez, there's a lot of African American nominees in this category, isn't there? Like, it's pretty impressive that they've just been done so well. They've had such great roles in these particular shows this year. It's it's quite it, it, it's a really great story. In fact, across the board, um, and this category is one of those ones that you can actually um, point to as well. You know, the Academy really embraced a lot of um, really beautiful and impressive African American performances this year on TV. Jim Parsons is the obvious front runner, and I feel like on the one hand, you know, obviously he's going to win. On the other hand, I wonder, and this might be overthinking things, but, you know, are they going to award this, you know, white sexual predator uh, when they have all these alternatives? Like, can a character so despicable win right now? Uh, especially when you're, you're overthinking things. a series nominee. Yeah, it's, it's hard to figure out who is in second place here. Um, or first in my case, but I've got that's, Lewis Gossett that Jr. I think is the that I think is the big is the big problem because we you know I think and I think Charlie's exactly right. I think if Joe Mantello had been nominated instead of Dylan McDermott, I think this would have been a way more wide open field. Um, but now I think we have such an obvious front runner just in terms of the the again the big Emmy performance. I mean, this is really what this is. You know, I feel like there's a certain, there's a certain nostalgic factor, and I don't say that in a positive way, but there's a certain nostalgic factor to the fact that Parsons is so big, and it is what we used to say, that's what we wanted to see in Emmy submissions um, when the tapes were the center of it. So um, I think because we're having such a hard time coming up with one viable or alternative. I think that's just, I think Parsons benefits from that. Yeah, that's, that's totally fair. Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel like it's a case of, you know, does somebody have more claim, more passion than Parsons? For me, it's just kind of, is Parsons capable of winning on his own merits? Yes or no. Uh, so I'm going with no, 
Uh, so I've got Lewis Gossett Jr. Uh, winning since he is a legend. And I feel like uh, this is the category of maybe any of the ones at the Emmys that is most likely to award a veteran, um, you know, kind of going back through the years. He's playing this, what, like 106 year old man. Um, but it could also be Yaya Abdul Mateen II, since he is playing, you know, the larger part and kind of the showier part. 